Welcome back. Uh, it's early in the season, but I still feel like, you know what? I want to talk about Buffalo today. Here we are. Uh, it's been a mixed bag for Buffalo so far this season, but they are 4-4-1. and And they've dug their way out of a hole to get to 4-4-1. and <clears throat> So I wanted to talk about that a bit. I wanted to talk about their upcoming schedule as well, some statistics, and all that fun stuff. So the Buffalo Sabres are a good young team. And for years now, I have been waiting for this team to finally make the playoffs for the first time in what feels like forever. Um, in fact, for kids 13 and younger, they would have uh, no way to remember that the Buffalo Sabres were ever a playoff team, which is, that's a lot. It's a long time. It's a very, very long time. Uh, you have kids that go to school and may even have some Sabres gear that have never seen a playoff game. Is this the year that changes? And it's a question we've been asking for a while. And so I figured, you know, today let's take a look at it. So their upcoming schedule is not easy. Nobody's schedule really is easy, though. Uh, but that being said, they have a game tomorrow, Monday, at home against Florida. <clears throat> That's a huge test right there. Florida's playing well, could have Barkov in the lineup. If they can beat Florida, that is a huge sign that this may be the year that Buffalo finally starts to put things together. And then they don't play again until Friday when they're at home against the Islanders. Well, the Islanders have been fragile. They've had troubles with scoring. That's a, that's a game they can win. And then on Saturday, they're in Detroit. So they beat Detroit yesterday. So we've seen that they can beat Detroit. That means of their next three games, two of them are of the winnable variety. And those two are back-to-back -back as well. Uh, then on the following Tuesday, they're at home against Ottawa. Is that a winnable game? Maybe. And again, uh, the Ottawa Senators, I think, are better this year than last year. But this is where Buffalo can show they're better than they were last year as well. Uh, then on Thursday, they're away against the Rangers. Rangers are a tough team. That, I could absolutely see that being a loss. Uh, but then on Saturday, they're at home against Calgary. Calgary's had the great start. Uh, it feels like they're they're kind of coming back to earth a little bit. And, and I'm saying a little bit because they still gave Winnipeg everything they could handle last night. And Winnipeg is 8-0. No. So that's not a gimme either. And then on the Monday, uh, Remembrance Day, November 11th, they're at home against Montreal. So, of the next seven games, you can look and say Montreal, Ottawa, Detroit, Islanders. Those are games they could win and maybe should win. So that would be four right there. Calgary's a maybe. And then you're just left with Florida and the Rangers, right? So this is not that daunting of a schedule. But <clears throat> for the Buffalo Sabres, and definitely for their fans as well, we know that over the years, they found a way to lose games they should win and, and all that fun stuff. Last last year, of course, they missed the playoffs by a bit. Uh, the season before, they were very, very close. And what made the difference really was losing games they probably should have won. And so we're still talking about this drought. Whereas if in 2022, 2023, they had won those games they should have, they would have been a playoff team and we wouldn't be talking about the drought. I'd be talking about another team right now on the board. So... With those seven games in mind, you guys can let me know how many you think are going to be won by the Buffalo Sabres. But Tage Thompson has been a huge part of that turnaround. Nine games, seven goals, four assists, 11 points. This is the Tage Thompson, not of last season, but of the previous season, which is important because that's when Buffalo was scoring a ton of goals. Uh, Alex Tuck, nine games, three goals, six assists, nine points. He's back to point per game as well. So the scoring is back on that level. Paterka, seven games, four goals, three assists, seven points. And Paterka's been good throughout. When he's been in the lineup, he's been excellent. Uh, I think their most consistent player, I would argue, is J.J. Paterka. Uh, Owen Power, after a bit of a slow start statistically, he's got it together. Nine games, two goals, five assists, seven points. Not too shabby. Uh, Zucker, nine games, one goal, five assists, six points. Uh, McLeod's been a good pickup from the Oilers. Nine games, four goals, one assist, five points. And during the summer when that trade took place, um, and everybody was saying, oh, the Oilers win, the Oilers win, the Oilers win. I understood what Buffalo was doing there, and so I think it could very well be a win for both teams, depending on how Savoy plays for the Oilers when he gets there. Um, Darlene, five assists in nine games, no goals as of yet. We know Darlene can put up goals in bunches. So eventually that's going to start. Jordan Greenway, good start for him. Eight games, two goals, two assists, four points. And Bowen Byram, nine games, one goal, three assists, four points. One thing that Buffalo has going for them that very few teams can boast is three excellent young defensemen in Power, Darlene, and Byram. These three are all excellent young defensemen. And if Buffalo finds a way to get all of them paid 
and all of them happy, this could be a really solid blue line for the next decade. Uh, Lukanen's 3-2-1 and one with an 899 save percentage. I don't think the save percentage tells you how well he's been playing. Uh, and Levi, 1-2 and two with an 874 save percentage. Same with Levi. I think he's trending in the right direction. Both goalies better than that save percentage at this point. Now, <clears throat> their 4-4-1 and one start, they get there via a three-game winning streak. They beat Chicago 4-2, Dallas 4-2, and Detroit 5-3. Of course, Dallas being the big one out of those three, uh, Chicago, a team that we know are going to miss the playoffs. Detroit, a team that's so up and down, you never know what you're getting from one night to the next. So the win over Dallas, a big one, but again, it's about being able to build on that. Now, last year through nine games, they were four and five. So I thought, I'm going to look all the way back to all of, through all of the seasons they missed the playoffs. 2022-2023, uh, they started six and three. So they ended up being very close to a playoff spot and a good start helped them you know, generate some interest there. 2021, 2022, they started 5, 3, and 1. 2020, 2021, they started 4, 3, and 2. So good starts. We've been able to see that with Buffalo for the most part. Uh, 2019, 2020, they started 7, 1, and 1. That was a great start to that season. I remember being so excited for what Buffalo might be able to do, and then it just fell apart after that. 2018, 2019, they were 5 and 4 to start the season. So going back through the last half decade, good starts happens with Buffalo. Absolutely. It's, and it's a matter of it's an 82-game schedule. Can they finish strong and can they avoid something going wrong in the middle? Uh, so 2017-2018, they're 2-5-2 two, and two to start the season. 2016-2017, 4-3-2 two, through nine games. Uh, and prior to that, kind of some ugly records here. 2015-2016, they were 3-6. and 2014-2015, 2-7. 2013, 2014, 1, 7, and 1. 2012, 2013, 3, 5, and 1. And the first season they missed the playoffs, uh, 2011, 2012, they started 6 and 3. So there are some rough starts in there, but the 4, 4, and 1 start middling. Uh, four wins in nine games is middling overall, but they are, again, trending in the right direction. So their goal scoring is at 3.33 goals for per game. That leads them to, or leaves them 13th. And the overall list, their goals against per game at 3.44, that's 22nd. But that is coming down, at least over the last little bit, it's been coming down. They've only allowed uh, four, seven goals in their last three games. So that's definitely coming down. Their power play, bit of a problem. Only the one power play goal through nine games, 3.9%. That one power play goal being scored by Jason Zucker in the game yesterday against Detroit. They came into that game 0 for 22. Can't be 0 for 22, that's not going to work. So... Uh, getting that first power play goal, maybe we see the power play click. The problem is their next game is against Florida. Florida might be a little bit stingy. Um, penalty kill, 77.8%. That's right in the middle of the pack at 16th. So their penalty kill has been okay. That can definitely get better too. Their power play needs to get things rolling. Just think about what the record would be like if their power play was at 20% instead of flirting with 4%. So that's that's an issue for them. It's very early. It's a small sample size, yada, yada. However, <clears throat> it is notable that they're only at, you know, just a little below 4%. Now, the only injury they have is Zach Benson. And this is something Buffalo is going to need to keep going as well. Avoid injuries. And it is that, that tricky thing. You, very often, if you look at the team that wins the Stanley Cup, they're very often the healthiest team in terms of players being in the lineup. Not necessarily mean that they're the least beat up. Because by the time you reach that Stanley Cup final and you're in Game 7 of said Stanley Cup final, there's a lot of guys dealing with injuries that we find about as find out about as soon as that Stanley Cup final's finished. But right now, Zach Benson's the only one out. And in six games, he had no points so far this season. So, tough start to the season statistically for Benson. Now he's been dealing with an injury. It doesn't sound like it's anything major. Shouldn't be out that long. Other notables, though, Cousins has three assists in nine games. Cousins doesn't have it going yet. And Jack Quinn had the empty netter last night. That's his first goal of the year. So that's a goal and an assist for two points in eight games. Quinn's better than that. I think Cousins is better than that. So while we've seen the scoring get better, I think there's still room for more improvement. And I think Cousins, Quinn, and once Benson comes back, you've got a lot of good young players here. The, the one thing with Buffalo, the one thing that I, I do think they're missing, and I'll call back to the fact that before Patrick Kane signed with the Detroit Red Wings, this was the destination people figured he was going to go to. And it made a lot of sense. 
that a Patrick Kane type veteran with the cup wins and just the excellent overall resume would be a perfect fit for the Buffalo Sabres. And one thing that I think Kevin Adams would be wise to try to find somehow, and teams don't give these players away, but to have a leader, have somebody who's won in the past, have somebody who is a veteran player, you know, 33, 35, somewhere in that age range, that you don't need for the offense as much as you need for the leadership, the experience, and the ability to talk to these guys when things are going against them and to help them turn things around. I think bringing back Lindy Ruff as coach, I think that was probably a good move. Uh, early in the season, they had a tough time. But remember, the New Jersey Devils had tough times early in the season, too. I remember the Fire Lindy chance that became Sorry Lindy. So maybe we're getting into the Sorry Lindy phase of the Buffalo Sabres season as well. But I, I do feel like adding a veteran, adding somebody who's won before, and people may say, well, what about Phil Kessel? Kessel, I mean, for all the talk about Kessel, I think he could work with the Sabres. He's, he's definitely got the skating, but the fact that he's decided to, you know, pursue other interests tells you he just hasn't been able to find that, that NHL team that's, that's going to give him that chance. Closest he got was to him trying out for the Canucks and they ultimately didn't sign him. But I think somebody who's got cup rings, somebody who's a veteran and somebody who, when he talks, the team's really going to, you know, listen could be important because we know over an 82 game schedule, you're going to have some really rough patches. And that having that veteran voice and that presence to keep things steady is important. Buffalo can't panic when things start going bad, and they have in the past. So I, I, I'm i interested to see how these games go. I absolutely want to see Buffalo succeed. I think it would be great to finally have the Sabres back in the playoffs. But is 2025, is next year's playoffs going to be where we see them in there? Uh, is this the season where Buffalo finally gets above the playoff line? and stays there. And will this upcoming schedule here see them victorious and say five out of seven, and then we're having a whole new conversation about how good the, the, the Sabres have been? Or are we gonna see them have these, these losing streaks, winning streaks, and everything just balances out, and ultimately they end up around 500 and very likely miss the playoffs? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I don't, I, I've got my hopes up before, I'm not getting my hopes up right now that the Buffalo Sabres are going to make the playoffs, but I would love to see it if they did. I think that would be great. Um, I've talked about this recently too. It's nice to see teams in the playoffs that haven't been there in a while. So if we had everything gets turned on its ear and let's say Toronto, Boston, and Tampa all missed the playoffs and Detroit, Ottawa, and Buffalo all made it, I'd be happy, even though that would mean a team that I root for is not in the playoffs. I'd be so happy to see brand new matchups, new players getting a chance, and brand new rivalries being born. But let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe in the event you may not have done so already. Uh, I do hope that this is the year that the Sabres finally put it together. There's a lot of good young talent here, but there is a lot of youth on the in this group. And I do think that adding a veteran could help. So let me know who you think that veteran could be. Uh, one interesting thing, and I'll throw this out there. Marshawn's on an expiring deal. Let's just go down the rabbit hole and say Boston, just everything falls apart, and the Sabres are on a really good run. Could that happen? But yeah, let me know your thoughts. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you guys so much for all your support as always. And no, I'm not advocating for, for trading Marshawn. I don't think it happens. But strange things happen at trade deadlines, right? So thank you guys for your support. As always, I will talk to you again soon.